So there I was walking into Lidget's, my favorite guitar shop of all time, and I found a guitar that caught my eye. I was immediately pulled in by the beautiful Fire Mist Gold finish, the binding, the warmth of the color, and the amazing playability in that typical Tele twang you'd expect. This guitar seemed to have it all, and it was only a thousand bucks. What was this incredible guitar that I had just stumbled upon, and why was I so disappointed? I've owned many Fender guitars throughout my guitar playing journey, and one of the most notable ones was when I purchased a Fender Made in America Stratocaster in high school, and I saved up for months to purchase it. However, there's a few reasons I've not owned a Fender guitar in the last six plus years. One of the first reasons was about five and a half years ago, I purchased my first Sir, this guy right here. And I actually sold five different guitars to purchase this one. Pretty sweet. And the second reason being is now that I had played such an incredible, much more expensive guitar, when I found myself wanting another Fender product, typically I was already spending around $2,000. And at that point, I figured I might as well buy a boutique or a different brand of guitar in that $3,000 price range. And this leads into why I was so disappointed when I picked up this Telecaster. And if I'm being completely honest, I think the reason I was so disappointed was because I convinced myself that I needed the most expensive piece of gear to be happy as a guitarist. Now don't get me wrong, a thousand bucks on a telly is still a ton of money to spend. But for me personally, I found myself gravitating to wanting to have something that felt more cool than a Fender, something that was more off the wall. And because of that, I really missed out on some really incredible guitars over the years. And I know that may sound really weird to say out loud, but I think we all do this as guitarists and as musicians. We tend to graduate into that next level of instrument and we don't want to backpedal because we think it reflects on our musicianship. One really practical example would be when you go from owning your first Squire to upgrading into a Fender or you have an Epiphone and you upgrade into a Gibson. And in this case, I really think I missed out on some really fantastic instruments because I waited so long to go back and play something that I just enjoyed. I liked the looks of and I thought it sounded fantastic, but maybe previously would have written it off because of the headstock or the price tag. I think part of my excitement around this guitar was I had no idea what I just purchased. I didn't even know the model. I was just excited. I loved how it played. I loved how it looks and still do. And I knew that the previous owner had swapped out some of the electronics, which I'll talk about in a second. So when I got home, I took pictures, I posted online, and my buddy told me what I had just purchased. It's a JV modified 60s, made in Japan, Telecaster. And some of the electronics that were swapped out is it has a 920D wiring harness, and then it has 64 pure vintage Fender Tele pickups in it as well. Now, I also have the original electronics, so if you do want to see an AB of those two, I'm half tempted to do it anyway, but be sure to comment below and I'll make a comparison video. One thing that I love about these 64 pure vintage pickups is it has that mid-range and that snarl and telly twang that really just cuts in a mix, but it's still very clear and it's never overly bright. I really love the looks of this guitar and I get compliments about it all the time for how it looks. 
but I also just love the way that it feels. The vintage V-shaped neck is fantastic, and the new pickups on this really have a nice push mid-range and the traditional snarl and telly bite that you would expect, but they're not overly bright or brittle. They still cut in a mix the way you would want them to, especially on that bridge position, but even in the neck position, they sound fantastic as well. It's never muddy, it's not overly dark, but plays almost like the neck position on a strap. All in all, I am really pumped for this guitar and it's opened me back up to considering products that I don't think I previously would have otherwise. I'd love to know, is there a guitar that's just blown you away that you were not expecting? Be sure to comment below and then check out this video of this Psalm series that actually blew me away as well. See you next time.